Hello and thank you for joining today's webinar. Uh, today we're going to be looking at how teachers would use um, conditional activities, otherwise known as restricting access and activity completion within their courses. Um, we're using Google Hangouts on Air as usual, so if you have any questions, feel free to use the uh, Q and A, uh, sorry, chat facility built into this um, uh, into this uh, session. Uh, if you do have any questions after the session, feel free to email me. My email address is just in the middle there, and uh, at the very bottom is our uh, Twitter ID. So if you do want to uh, post any questions via Twitter, via tweet, so you can do do so using our Twitter account. Okay. So I'm going to uh, demonstrate how a teacher would control access to their course materials and also unlock access to certain activities when, a, when relevant criteria is met. Um, so the first thing is uh, restricting access, uh, or it used to be known as conditional activities. Um, it basically allows teachers to control access to their activities and resources, um, and access can be controlled by uh, date, uh, by grade, by group, uh, profile, and activity completion. Okay, um, we can also uh, restrict access uh, to an entire course section, uh, which is a fairly new feature which I'll be demonstrating as well. Um, um, your Moodle administrator must enable the conditional activities setting in Moodle in order for teachers to be able to use the features. Um, so that's the, the last bullet point I've mentioned there. Um, moving on to activity completion. Activity completion allows teachers to uh, set completion criteria into a specific course activity or resource. Um, students will see a tick icon when uh, they have um, met the com completion criteria, uh, which I think is a really helpful um, way of seeing their progress within the course. Uh, teachers also have the ability to allow students to mark activities as complete uh, without adding any conditions, so they can mark um, activities as complete themselves manually. Um, activity completion can be easily linked with uh, conditional activities so that access to a, a certain resource is granted when certain criteria is met. Um, to give you an example, um, when providing students access to a fun activity such as a game as soon as they've achieved a passing grade with an, an assignment or a quiz so um, that's that's something that you could consider that's something I'll, I'll show you as well um, again activity completion must be enabled by your Moodle administrator and there's an additional step with activity completion there's two settings there's a, a setting which is a site-wide setting in in Moodle which needs to be enabled by your administrator but there is also a activity completion uh, setting called uh, I believe it's called completion tracking which you have to enable within your course as well um, so during the walkthrough I'm going to be demonstrating how a teacher would use uh, both conditional activities and um, activity completion Completion, and um, I'll also be uh, maybe uh, logging in as a student to see uh, how they would uh, how how they would see their resources uh, with uh, restrict uh, access uh, with the, with the restrict access feature enabled. Okay, um, so yeah, without further ado, we'll just go close our slideshow here and go into our demo Moodle, which we've been using in the past. So this is our demo site. If you've not seen this before. Uh, it's a, a Moodle site, but it's uh, highly customized um, with a, uh, a really user-friendly front end. Um, so here we have our homepage, our landing page, and I'm logged in as a member of staff, and I'm going to use this course, Global Hazards, today. Okay, so I'm just going to click on Global Hazards, and this is the course which is currently using the topics format. Okay. Uh, the first thing I want to show you is uh, how to enable um, conditional activities and uh, also um, uh, restricting access as well. Um, so to do this, what you have to do is go to the home page and then on your administration block, we've got a option called site administration. If we click site administration, we get some new options down here. And the option that you want to choose here is advanced features okay so it's by default these features 
are uh, disabled. Um, but you can see on my uh, site here, I have, uh, if I scroll down further, I have got um, completion tracking enabled, but you can see default is no. And the same goes for restricted access. So on older versions of Moodle, this is called uh, conditional activities. Um, so I'm using Moodle 3 here. Um, so it's called enabled restricted access here. So that's uh, ticked and you can see the default value is no here. So you have to enable, your Moodle administrator has to enable these two uh, options uh, in your Moodle site. Um, once you've done that, when you go to your course, in order to use activity completion, you have to enable activity completion uh, or completion tracking within your course. So I'm inside my uh, global hazards course here. If I navigate down to my administration block, there is a link called edit settings here. And if I click this, I'm editing my course settings now. And because I've got conditional activities uh, enabled, oh sorry, activity completion enabled, I now have a new option here called completion tracking. And there's only one option in here and you just say yes to this. So by default, this will be set to no. Um, but if you want to use it, make sure you, you change this to yes. Okay, so within my course, what I want to show you first is the real basics of uh, restricting access. So I've got some resources within this course. Um, I've got some activities as well, such as forums and quizzes, which I'll be using. Um, but let's scroll down a little bit. So I've got a, 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 a link here and a document here. So this document is a PowerPoint document. So what I can do is I can edit this document and add uh, certain restrictions or a, a criteria um, and to do the, to do this I would click on edit settings which I've just done and if I scroll down I would go into this heading called restrict access if I click on this I can see a button which allows me to add a restriction and the first one I want to use is the date um, option here at the top so the date option allows you to choose a from or until date so I can say until um, and a certain date, so the 30th of May. So this document will be visible to all of my students until the 30th of May. Um, or I can say from 30th of May, and this document will, will be unavailable until the 30th of May, and it will be available after 30th of May. I can add another restriction as well. So if I click on um, add restriction, I can add date again. So I can say from the 30th of May until the 25th of June. So you can add uh, the date filter more than once and you can choose if students must uh, match all or some of the, uh, the criteria uh, down here. Now you've also got uh, an eye icon next to each one of these um, uh, criteria and that basically means if I click on the eye, uh, it basically means that this resource will not be visible within this course. If I leave it open as it is, uh, then this uh, uh, this resource will be um, grayed out text basically so the student won't be able to click on this activity unless that date criteria is met okay so I'm just going to cancel this okay so that was the date filter the other thing that you could use is um, the uh, grade option as well so if you've got any uh, activities in here um, which um, have uh, uh, which use grading such as a quiz I've got a quiz here and I can say, okay, I only want to give access to this SCORM resource, this SCORM package, if um, my students have achieved a certain grade within, within the quiz task. So if I do edit settings for this activity now, I can go into my settings here. And again, it's a heading called restrict access. And then if we click add restriction, we used date first. We've also got an option called grade. And then the grade option uh, allows you to choose all the gradable activities. So we can say we can use the course total. We can use, let's say, our quiz, which was just above this activity in the, on the course. We can say, okay, we want to use this quiz, and we want to say um, all students must achieve um, higher than seventy percent. So anyone who achieves higher than seventy percent will have access to this. Uh, SCORM package uh, which is called the earth okay um, 
and um, yeah, there's also a less than as well. So you can say if if you want it to be higher than seventy and less than ninety, then you can also add this by clicking on this checkbox and adding the uh, the value into the box here. So it's 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 uh, fairly easy to use. I'm sure you agree. Um, so that's a great option. The other thing that we could do is um, we can use the group uh, option as well to control access. So if I go into my quiz, what I can do is uh, actually to give you a better example, I can use an assignment. So I've got an assignment here called study, uh, sorry, student activity, um, which is a, a Moodle assignment. And what I can do here is I can um, edit the settings of this um, assignment so that only one group has access to this. And sometimes you might have uh, students who are part of two groups and they have two different deadlines even though they work on the same kind of course materials and, and the homework and, and the assignments. Um, what I can do here is I can duplicate this activity and um, that will create a copy of this activity within this course. So you can see now once the page loads I'll have two assignments on my course and what I can do with these assignments is I can edit the assignment settings to allow uh, a certain group access to the first one and the other group access to the second one and the only difference between these two will be the actual due dates um, whereas the actual assignment criteria will be the same so I'm going to go into edit and edit settings and all I'm going to do here is scroll down into restrict access and click on add restriction and this time I'm, I'm going to use group uh, if you've got groupings, you can use groupings as well, which is pretty much the same thing. Um, so I'm just going to use group, and you can see now I can choose a group. So I've got two groups in my course. So I've got a year 12 group and a year 13 geography group. So I'm going to I'm going to give this to the year 12 group, and I'm also going to click on this I, which basically means that anyone who's not part of this group will not be able to see this activity within the course. So I'm just all I'm going to do is do save and return to course, and that will take me back to the course. You can see this is how it looks to a teacher. So it's a grayed out activity for a teacher, but the teacher can also access it by clicking on the link. And underneath, you can see the criteria. Uh, so it says not available unless you belong to this uh, to this class here. Uh, what I'm going to do the next activity that I create a copy of, I'm going to change the due date because um, these are year 13 pupil and they'll have a um, a, a different uh, schedule so I want to change the due date to let's say 25th of November which is a month later and I'm just gonna go down to the bottom and restrict access so that only my year 13s have access to this um, activity so I'm going to use group again and I'm going to choose my year 13 group this time and I'm also going to click on the I just to make sure that no one else can see this activity so I'm just going to do save and return to course Okay, and to show you how this works, you can see I've got the two activities here. And to show you how it works, I'm going to log in as a as a student who belongs to the year twelve uh, group, and he should only be able to see the the one activity. So to do this, you would use the administration block. So in, within the administration block, you have users and enrolled users. So enrolled users is a page which shows you all your students within your course and you can also see what groups they are part of so you can see we have a student here called Jimmy Abbey and he's part of 12 uh, GG1 12 BGG1 so I'm gonna log in as Jimmy here so to log in I just click on his profile picture and I can click on login as here click on continue some I'm roaming in as Jimmy here, so you can see at the very top in the corner, you are logged in as Jimmy. And if I scroll down to the bottom, well, I'm not to the bottom, but further down, you can see I have the one activity. Okay, so for me, I only see the one activity. So all the year 12 students, uh, all the year 12 group will, will see this activity, uh, whereas my year 13s will see the other activity. So that's how you would use groups. Uh, to give certain groups access to um, your course materials um, such as activities and resources. So I'm just going to log out here, log back in as a teacher. 
Um, the other thing that you can do is use um, data stored within your user profile. Um, so if I go to, uh, let's, just, let's quickly go to site administration and have a look at a student's profile. So I'm just gonna go to browse list of users. I'm just gonna use Jimmy again. So Jimmy Abby was a student. Okay, and if I click on his, I edit his profile, I can see that he's got a username, a first name and last name. He's got a city of Northampton. And if I scroll down further, I can see further optional fields, uh, an ID number, and there's also in a section called learner information. So sometimes if you've got a fairly basic Moodle setup and you don't have uh, integration with MIS, then it can be difficult to enroll students to your courses. So one way you could do this is by adding uh, a field in your um, in your pro user profile fields, such as form group or year group. And what you can do here is you can then use restrict access to, to only show certain course materials um, based on data uh, within the user profile. So for example, if I go back into my geography course, and if I go into, let's say, we'll use, in fact, I'll turn editing on. I'll just use our PowerPoint document, which we had near the top here. So we've got what is a hazard, which is a PowerPoint document. I'm just going to click on edit settings again. And this time I'm going to use the um, user profile option within restrict access. So under here, we've got the option called uh, user profile. And here I can choose all these different profile fields. So I can say these are all the additional fields. So if I say, okay, I only want to show this activity to everyone that's, that's got the value 12 in the year field within their profile. And if I do save and return, um, this activity will only be visible to everyone that has that uh, number 12 within that user field. So again, if we log in as uh, our students, um, okay, so if I log in, log in as someone else who's not part of, uh, year, so we've got Megan here who's part of year 13, so she'll have number 13 in her profile field, so you can see year is 13, so this user, this learner should not be able to see the activity, and it should appear grayed out, um, so if I log in, as I'll have to give it a, uh, an email address. Email address is missing here this, because it's a mandatory field. It won't let me go any further. Um, so I'm just going to complete that field for for Megan. And if I go into my courses and click on geography, I can see the course um, as any other learner. But if I scroll down, you can see that what is a hazard is not available unless your year is 12. Okay. So that's how you could use user profile um, option as well. Um, the other thing to show you is that you can actually control access uh, not only to individual activities but a whole course uh, section. So I have a revision section at the bottom here, um, which is right down here. Um, and it might make sense to make this section available when it, it's revision time. So in schools in, in, in the UK, uh, for year 12 and 13 students revision usually happens in uh, February, March, that kind of time, so the exams are in May and June. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on turn editing on and then if I scroll down I'm going to click on uh, edit settings for my section. So each section has a edit menu. You can see that we've got a, a section called hazard trends here and we've got a menu called edits and edit topic. Okay. So I'm just going to go down to my revision section, which is at the bottom here, and I've got a menu called Edit, and I can click on Edit Topic here. Okay, so this shows me the section name and the summary that I've added in the past, but I've also got an option called Restrict Access. And here I can say Add a Restriction and only show this entire section um, from the 1st of March. 
2016 and I can also say only show it to um, until the 1st of um, let's say July that's when the exams will be finished and then I can say save changes there so all my students will, will only be able to see this whole topic the all, all of the all of the resources within this topic um, will only be visible within um, within those within that time frame for, from the first of March to the first of July so that's something that you can do to an entire course section so if you if you're preparing a section for the future you can uh, add um, restrictions to it um, you can also add a, a group restriction so you can say okay this restriction this this uh, course section revision is only applicable to my year 13 group I only want them to be able to see this and I can say I can click on the eye icon and that will basically mean that no one else other than my year 13 students will be able to see this entire course section and all the resources and activities within this section okay so I'm just going to cancel that so yeah but you can edit course sections um, so that to do that you would click on edit and edit topic and then just use the restrict access uh, feature built in Okay, so the next thing I want to do is show you um, activity completion. So activity completion allows teachers to set a criteria um, which st when students meet it, the activity is marked as complete. Okay, and then I'm going to use activity completion with uh, restrict, ac ac uh, restrict access. rather. Um, <clears throat> so if I'm just going to go back to the top of the page, and I have a quiz here. Okay, so this quiz is called Classified Hazards, and I'm going to edit the settings of this quiz to make sure that it has a, uh, a passing grade. So in, in grade here, I've got an option called Grade to Pass, uh, which is set to 30, which means that this activity is, um, is passed uh, by the student um, wh when they achieve 30% or more. Which is, I know is a low, it's a low grade, but I'm just using this as an example. Um, so underneath that, we have activity completion. So I want to mark this activity as complete um, when the student um, uh, is uh, when when the student pa achieves a passing grade of 30 or more. So what I can do here is I can say, click on completion tracking. Um, and there's two options here, so students can manually mark the activity as complete. So the student would click on the checkbox. To mark it as complete themselves, or I can choose to show activities complete when condition uh, when certain conditions are met. Those conditions are down here, so you can see the first one that I've ticked already is require passing grade, which is ticked. So the passing grade is thirty percent or more. Um, so that's what well to to mark this um, activity as complete, the students must achieve thirty percent or more. Okay, so that's what I'm going to leave in here. And I'm all, all I'm going to do is save and return to course. So that's me adding activity completion to my quiz. So that's the criteria, that's the conditions that I've added. Okay, so you can see now, because I've added activity completion, I have an icon on the right-hand side. Um, and Moodle will mark this as complete. Um, so it'll become a green tick or a blue tick um, when the students achieve um, the conditions that are within this activity. Um, okay, and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add a uh, a new activity, and this activity is called Quiz Venture. So this is something that's not part of uh, Core Moodle. It's a third-party plugin which you can download and install if you look after your own Moodle installation. If you have a managed Moodle, um, then I would suggest you contact your support team. Um, who will be able to install this uh, module for you. But basically this module, all it does is it, it links with the, the Moodle question bank. So the, uh, all the quiz questions that you create within, within your quizzes are stored within the Moodle question bank. And um, this activity uses all of the multiple choice uh, questions and it, and it creates like a, a Space Invaders uh, game kind of interface which is quite uh, a fun interface so if I click on add here um, <clears throat> I'm just gonna call it space 
invaders. Okay, I'm not gonna add a description. All you do here is give it a name which is which is something that will appear on the course page. And the second thing you do is choose which question category you, you want to pull your questions from. So these question categories are within the question bank. So I have a, a category here called Magic's questions. Now there's three questions in here, but only one of the questions is a multiple choice question. So it's gonna pull the question, The multi, it's only gonna pull one question within this activity, which is fine, but we're not using it as an example. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add restrict access in here, and I'm gonna click on add restriction. Now you can see, because I've enabled activity completion within my quiz um, uh, just earlier, there's a button here called activity completion. So I can click on activity completion and I can say um, this quiz activity. So these, this menu here will bring up all the activities where you set up activity completion. So I've, all, I've only got the one quiz which I've enabled activity completion so far. So I'm gonna select my quiz and I'm gonna say must be marked as complete. Um, we can also go further if you're not using a passing grade you, uh, and you've got a different criteria you can say it must be marked with complete and also uh, they must have the student, student must achieve a passing grade um, but my uh, conditions are just to achieve a passing grade so I'm just going to use the first option here um, and then I've also got the I option here as well so if I click on the I option um, that activity will, will will not be visible to my students but because it's a game and it's Called Space Invaders, I think it'll be a good idea to show this activity to students so they can see um, what what they'll have access to um, if they achieve a, a passing grade. So that should entice them to um, do well in, in the quiz to make sure they achieve the passing grade. Okay, so that's the uh, restriction I've added. So I've added a restriction which uses activity completion, and all I'm going to do here is save and return to course. Okay, so if I scroll down a bit now, you can see there's a, a Space Invaders activity here, and it says not available unless the activity quiz classified hazards, which is just above here, is marked as complete. So this activity will only be marked as complete when students achieve 30% or more. So to test this, I'm just going to log out and log in as a student. So probably best just to log out completely here um, and then log in as a learner. Um, so I'm just going to log in very quickly so I'm logged in as Jimmy Abbey again so you can see I'm logged in as a different user at the top there if I go to my global hazards course I can go down and see this course as a student so I can see the quiz activity here I can see space invaders I really want to play space invaders but I can't play it unless I uh, um, achieve a uh, well mark this activity is complete so to do that I have to achieve 30% or more so if I click on the quiz I can now attempt well re-attempt the quiz I've already taken it before and if I go into my questions I'm just going to click on some answers here this is what the quiz looks like so we're just uh, going through these options here So all of the questions are on one page here, as you can see. So I've filled in nine of the questions. There's one question on a separate page, which I'll just fill in here and then do next. So all of my answers are saved, and I'm just gonna do submit all and finish. Okay, so you can see I've achieved seven out of 10. Um, so if I go into my course now, the next activity should be unlocked for me. So you can see now Space Invaders is now unlocked. If I click on Space Invaders, I can see this is the interface you get. You can go into full screen mode. You can also enable sound. But as soon as you press start, you can see the question at the very top there. And then you choose the right answer by clicking the space bar. Um, so I'm, get, I'm getting the first question appearing again and again on repeat. But if you had more questions, more multiple choice questions, then uh, you would be able to see them um, on every um, every uh, option. Okay, um, I think that's it for now uh, for today in terms of uh, activity. It's been a long one today. 
Um, but uh, I've gone through activity completion and conditional activities. So hopefully um, you'll be able to use uh, these features within your courses. Um, this video will be uh, made available, uh, sorry, this webinar will be made available as a video on YouTube, uh, on our YouTube channel. So um, feel free to pop on to youtube.com um, forward slash Titus Learning, and then you should be able to find this video uh, from today. Um, so the next webinar will be held on the 22nd of June, which is a Wednesday. And again, I'll be doing these uh, twice uh, a day, so 8 a.m. in the morning and also 4 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, that's British summertime. And we're going to be looking at how a teacher would reuse resources and also import resources from other courses. So that session, session should only last 20, maybe 25 minutes. Uh, but again, it'll be a really useful one for you to see. Um, so just before I go, I just want to say thanks for watching today. Um, I hope you found it useful and uh, hopefully I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and bye for now.